Hello. In this video of today, I would like to tell you a little bit more how to set up Simplicity Single Sign-On with Microsoft ADFS. For that, we should tell you a little bit more how the architecture works. You can see in average reference architecture, you see clients can live on your corporate network or they can live on the internet. There is an orchestration service that does the business logic for sync and share. And you see at the, the corporate network, you have your Active Directory with the IDP, which will be in our case, Microsoft ADFS to authenticate. In front of that, in the DMZ, there will be a load balancer or an ADFS proxy or something else to connect the IDP to the internet. It always starts with a user connecting to our orchestration saying, I would like to authenticate. Most of the times that is done by giving the orchestration the email address. Orchestration identifies to which account you belong. It will see you have been using a uh, single sign-on activated and we will send you to the ADFS of uh, your organization. Your client will authenticate to your ADFS server to the Active Directory. And when that is successfully done, the ADFS sends us back an ADFS SAML token. That SAML token will contain the ticket saying that the end user was, the end user was successfully authenticated. And that also tells the orchestration to give a machine token or device token to the client. From that moment, desktop client, for example, no longer needs to authenticate anymore. As long as the device token is there, user can use uh, simplicity. That brings us to the next point. What is required for SSO? You need, of course, an ADFS server. You need a URL for that ADFS server, which we reference to with a fully qualified domain name something like adfs.mycompany.com and of course you need to use a certificate that is a real signed certificate not a self-signed certificate in order to get access to your ADFS server uh, firewall ports need to be opened so your ADFS somehow needs to be reach be, needs to be reachable from the internet that can be either by an ADFS proxy it can also be by a, a reverse proxy or maybe even with a load balancer that stands in front of your ADFS or ADFS server cluster. Anyway, it needs to arrange traffic from the clients to arrive to the IDP. In Simplicity, you will set up a custom domain and that is the URL where users can, uh, can initiate their authentication from. By default, or typically that is something that you reference as HTTPS mycompany.simplicity.com. Remember, it always ends with .simplicity.com. We will create an entity ID and an ADFS, uh, will, uh, it's being referred to as a relying party trust, an RPT. It tells the IDP where the clients from the service provider will come from. For Simplicity, our default would be something like HTTPS mycompany.simplicity.com slash SP. You will get from Simplicity an SSO certificate. We will upload that in the ADFS and we'll use that to sign the token. And your ADFS also has a token signing certificate that is need to be imported in the Simplicity Admin Console. And of course, you will need users that are created in Simplicity with the same email address as they are registered in the Active Directory. So, what is the procedure to set this up? Again, we need to register the fully qualified domain name for the ADFS. We need to get an SSL certificate. Wildcard certificate would be fine. We need to set up the ADFS, and this is of course out of the scope of this demo, and we need to test this. You configure your firewall and make sure that traffic can flow from the clients over HTTPS to your ADFS server. We're going to install the desktop client and we're going to log in with a global admin. And we're going to do that in case that single sign-on would not work so we can still log in with that desktop client to the Simplicity Admin Console in order to disable it or to at least troubleshoot the issue. We're going to configure single sign-on. That means we're going to create a custom domain we're going to register the identity ID, the relying party trust, configure your Active Directory and ADFS, create a relying party trust, import the SSO certificate in the ADFS server, 
and import the ADFS token signing certificate in Simplicity. That's in short what we'll need to do. So let's get our hands dirty and let's get started by navigating to ADFS. To configure ADFS, I need to know what my endpoint is. And that's something you can, can find in the ADFS uh, server under the ADFS server service endpoints. So navigate to that node and you'll see there your URL path for the Federation service. I can now do a test and I can do, for example, an IDP initiated sign on test to see if my ADFS server listens to the internet or the, uh, the network to uh, try to authenticate. My SSL certificate is, is valid and I can, for example, do a simple test to sign, to sign in. Simplicity doesn't support initi IDP initiated sign on, so I'm, I'm just going to skip that here. I now know that my test was successful. So, now we can go to the ADFS server, navigate to the trust relationships, relying party trusts, and add a new relying party trust. That's cool because that's a wizard that's going to take us to all the steps required. We're going to enter the data manually. We're going to give a very descriptive name for this um, single sign-on relying party trust. We're going to select the default ADFS profile. We're going to leave the token encryption default. We're not going to do that. And in the next step, we're going to enter the consumer service. And that is something that I need to explain a little bit because we are going to use the custom domain for that. The custom domain is something you typically set up in the Simplicity Admin Console under Admin Settings, single sign-on. That custom domain is something like mycompany.com. It will also be used for the entity ID that we're going to use. And based on that custom domain, we're going to set up the assertion consumer service URL. So that's always slash auth slash assertion consumer service dot ASPX. Let's click next. And now we also need to give that RPT trust identifier. That was this URL here. So the custom domain slash SP. Let's paste it in here add it and click next I'm going to uh, I'm not going to do multi-factor authentication that is out of the scope of this demo and for this demo I'm going to allow all the users in my organization to try to uh, use this relying party trust actually my wizard is done and I now need to configure the um, claim rules for the configuration of the incoming attributes we need to create actually two rules one is to um, uh, link the email address. We're going to use uh, LDAP attributes for this claim. We're going to give uh, a rule name like send the email address. From the Active Directory, from the attribute store, sorry, we're going to use the Active Directory. And we are going to ex we're going to say that from the LDAP attribute we're going to use email address and the outgoing claim type will also be email addresses so that is the email address being sent back to simplicity simplicity also expects the email address to be sent of the tape name id that's the identifier for the user and therefore we'll use a set we'll set up a second rule name and that's going to map the incoming claim type to an outgoing claim type so the claim rule is typically uh, as the claim rule name is something like transform the incoming email address to a name ID, and for the incoming claim type, we will select the email address, and the outgoing claim type will be name ID. Which is of the name ID format email. All any other attributes uh, values are going to be passed through and we've now set up our two rules. That's great. So now we need to exchange the certificates. In order to get our SSO certificate you send simply an email to support that will give you an uh, SSO certificate. I already have this for my uh, environment, so I'll just navigate to the tab signature. I'm going to add 
click add and I will upload the certificate that I got from support I'll upload it here navigate to that certificate there it is open it and it's immediately import. You can verify that it's still valid to make sure that you're not using an old version of our certificate. And we also need to make sure that it was correctly signed. So we sign our certificate as SHA-256 and you might want to double check that by navigating to the advanced tab and check that it also says there SHA-256 or SHA-2. That's one thing. Uh, ADFS has a token signing certificate, so under ADFS server certificates, you will find the token signing certificate, view that certificate, and will export that to a file. Make sure that it's base64 encoded, give it a nice name, something like ADFS token signing certificate, click next. And now we need to bring that certificate to a computer that we're going to use to upload it to the Simplicity Admin Console. I have already uploaded that certificate here on my desktop. So I see that it's extension CER. Simplicity requires it to be a DER or PEM. So I'm going to rename that with the extension to DER. I'll go back to my Simplicity Admin Console and I will import that certificate in the IDP certificate. Make sure that it says ADFS signing, that means that you have uploaded the correct certificate. And uh, by the way, I also forgot to set up the ADFS URL. Remember that slash ADFS slash SL, which corresponds to my endpoint here. Oops, let's go back, let's do that again. So URL of my ADFS server slash ADFS slash SLS because that was my endpoint. Save the changes and from now my single sign-on is configured. And let's test that by opening a browser, navigate to the custom domain, HTTPS in my case residencenewland.simplicity.com, that's my custom domain. By hitting enter, I will be brought to the ADFS FS server. So one step already successful. I am allowed to authenticate. There's no errors presented. Uh, you can, some ADFS servers allow you to uh, log in with an email address. And you see, I have been successfully authenticated. If things don't work, you can always install a plugin in Firefox called SAML Tracer. I like that very much because if there's something not working, the XAML Tracer plugin will allow you to, uh, to find the issue. In this case, you see uh, the, the, the extra window there. It will show me the XAML messages being sent back and forth. So if I try to authenticate and something would maybe be, be goofy or something, I can still see in that XAML Tracer what has been sent back and forth. And actually, the last post that was uh, sent from the ADFS server to my uh, Simplicity tenant, that contains the message, like the consumer service. I was successfully authenticated, therefore you will see the status success. And very important, it also shows in the subject of this SAML ticket, the email address of the user that was successfully authenticated. So in this case, that was Mr. Bob Sink at hotmail.com. That was the user that was successfully authenticated. If things go wrong, test if the email address corresponds to that email address that was uh, in ADF in your Active Directory and also in Simplicity. That's it. Thank you for watching and uh, let us know if you would like to see any additional videos from us. Bye-bye.